They've got their passports, packed their bags, and set off to see the world. Chinese tourists are traveling like never before. And Paris, with its museums and luxury shopping, is their destination of choice. Their spending is a welcome boost to the French economy. But locals complain that a clash of cultures is changing the very nature of their city. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of 101 East, we ask what it will take to turn the plane loads of first-time travelers from China into welcomed sightseers. Je n'ai besoin de rien, rien qu'un bout de pain. It hasn't been a good year for the city of love. Paris has been rocked by terror attacks, submerged by floods, and racked by violent protests and strikes. It's meant a slow start to the summer tourist season, and visitor numbers from most countries have plummeted. But not the Chinese. For them, Paris is still the most popular destination outside of Asia. At times, the centre of the city can look more like downtown Beijing. Especially in the shopping district, outside Stephanie Verret's restaurant and bar. Here, the all-important French greeting, bonjour, has been replaced. According to Stephanie, good French manners and etiquette have also disappeared. They don't say hello, they don't speak English, they don't speak French, they only speak Chinese. When you have 10 people, Chinese people coming. It's very noisy and I don't understand. But she says what really gets to her is the spitting. Uh, I had a woman, she came and she, she sit down and she, uh, I don't know the name in English, in, uh, in the floor and you're like, Wow. So inside? Inside. She was just sitting. Uh, I came with the menu and she... Stephanie has lived and worked in this street for 25 years. Rue de Provence was lined with typical Parisian shops until a Chinese restaurant opened a few years ago. Next to it, it was a bar, mm -hmm. a really typical bar, French bar, you know, people taking coffee and croissant in the morning. Mm -hmm. Within two years, almost all of the owners were offered large amounts of cash by Chinese proprietors. So all of these small businesses then all sold to Chinese yeah, it was restaurants. like a little village. These days, the little village is no more. Aside from the crowds, competition between the new Chinese business owners is fierce, as our camera crew found out. <laughs> Have they ever tried to buy your business? Uh, yeah, we had some proposition, yes. What happened? I refuse. Uh, we have also a guide who asked us to open for a night, but only for making Chinese food. So I'm, I don't know how to do Chinese food, so I just refused. This one? Yes. Stephanie wants to be clear she's not against okay. Chinese tourists. Sure, sure. She admits that business would be tough without them. Nearly two million Chinese tourists visited Paris last year, spending more than one billion euros, more than the Japanese or the Americans. But she says culturally, she finds the large tour groups hard to deal with. We try to learn Chinese. We try to be nice with them because, you know, it's not their fault. It's just two different cultures. If the guy could just take time to explain to them in the bus, don't do that. This is not normal. Watch out. The clash of cultures from inexperienced Chinese tourists has been well documented on social media around the globe. There's the man who had a bath in a Venice canal. 
a student who graffitied his name on an Egyptian temple. Fights at the airport. Fights on the plane. Fights at the buffet table. All this has led to Chinese authorities threatening to blacklist badly behaved tourists and ban them from traveling abroad. But is this the whole picture? Are Chinese really worse than other tourists? Or are they simply misunderstood as millions embark on their first trips abroad? Being a Chinese tourist in Paris isn't all that easy, as I'm about to find out. This is Yolanda. She's teaching Chinese tour guides how to handle busloads of tourists in Paris. The first lesson is, don't stay in one place for very long. Yolanda has lived in Paris for 14 years and likes to think of herself as a bridge builder, teaching Chinese about Paris and Parisians about Chinese. If she stops for long enough, I'll try to find out how she does it. The second lesson is to keep up. Follow the phone she's holding. Yolanda manages to keep the group of tour guides together and to keep us marching, despite the expected photo stops and toilet stops. A quantity of sites rather than quality seems to be the name of the game. Yolanda tells us most Chinese clients just want a quick overview, nothing too in-depth. For instance, they're probably not interested in the fact that artists like Picasso and Dali made this area a mecca of modern art. It's all starting to be a blur. We're going at a cracking pace. We just went up the steps of the Sacre Coeur in about two minutes and she's still going. The area offers some of the best views of Paris. If you can manage to stop Yolanda for long enough to get a selfie. Okay, let's go, let's go. Back on the bus, it's time for lessons in French culture. Walk on the right side of the road. Don't allow your tourists to push to the front of the queue. Each of these guides will be responsible for groups of 40 or more tourists. It can be a lot to handle. China's growing wealth and huge population means many of the tourists in big groups are first-time visitors overseas. When the client arrived here, uh, they don't know they, they, they don't know the culture of Europe or even in France. You know, we need to give them some tips. Yeah. What are the main tips about the culture of Europe? The, the culture, uh, we, we need to wait. <laughs> sometimes we need to be patient and sometimes we need to, to say, how to say, please, thank you, and uh, how to say, be, be polite. Is that different in China? Uh, sometimes we are very hurry, you know, but here, every, take your time, take it easy, take your time and relax. I think you go very fast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not very fast. For today, just you take a relax. Down. Really? Like if the normal journey, no, sometimes more faster than that. But Yolanda says compared to years gone by, Chinese people are becoming more sophisticated travellers. In fact, in before, they just don't know how to behave in, in, in the foreign country. It's a little bit closed and we don't get the, enough information. Armed with Yolanda's instruction, I'm ready to join a tour group. Hi. Hi. They seem like a friendly bunch. Mr. Li Zhang is their guide. Like many Chinese tour groups, they aren't staying in Paris, 
but 20 kilometres outside of the city. Getting used to the food here has been a big challenge for some. Hotels like this one specifically cater to the tastes and needs of Chinese tourists, like bigger breakfasts and hot drinking water in the rooms. Can I sit here? This is Sha Jian and his family. His name means Mr. Summer, which is quite apt for someone on holiday. So where are you from in China? It's his first time in Europe, the trip of a lifetime. He's traveling for 19 days with his wife, two sister-in-laws, his daughter and granddaughter, Fei Fei. In the last two weeks, they've been to Finland, Switzerland, Italy, Luxembourg, Germany, Holland and Belgium. But today is especially exciting. Mr. Summer has always wanted to see the sights of Paris. What's been your favorite part of the tour so far? They only have two nights in Paris and its surrounds. That means, you guessed it, we have to hurry. Here we go on our whistle stop tour of Paris. This is one of the more upmarket Chinese tours. Mr. Summer is the owner of a garment factory and can afford the luxury coach. What is different about Europe from China? So far, his impressions are good, but there are some downsides to France, as we're about to find out at our first stop, the Palace of Versailles. Thousands of tourists are standing outside. The palace gates are closed. Mr. Lee goes in search of answers. But it doesn't look good, and they don't want us to film. Strikes that have been crippling France in protest over labor law reform have reached the chateau. Coming from state-controlled China, a strike is a new concept for Mr. Summer. So not everything in Europe is good. <laughs> what will you do now? They say in France, c'est la vie. Back on the bus, he's not the only one whose romantic notions of a Parisian holiday have been challenged. Changes to the schedule mean precious minutes have been wasted and tempers afraid. A fight has broken out over who gets to sit in the front seats of the bus. Just stay out of my 
太疯掉了，谁疯掉？刚刚清楚啊。哎、有证人在的。我跟你说，对不起，碰了他头了，还来了。对不起，对不起，昨天这个事情就是你出来的。要跟我们道歉。Two sisters from Shanghai are upset that Mr. Summers' family wanted to sit in the seats. 就不敢道歉，不能不能争，不敢面对，就是。互相让一步，互相让一步。就对着镜头好好笑嘛，好好说嘛。广东是个黑人外国记者，为什么？The many days of travel are starting to take their toll, but we press on to the next stop, the Chateau Fontainebleau. Its doors are open, but Mr. Summer has no desire to see the museum. It's the garden that most astounds him. The smells of nature are a novelty for many who are more used to the smells of a big city. <laughs> they only have an hour to spend here, but a break in the garden has definitely lifted everyone's mood. Even the sisters from Shanghai have cheered up. But soon enough, time is up, and it's back to the hustle. But not before a bit of karaoke on the bus. As the tour continues, the views keep coming thick and fast. There's so much to see in such little time. To save precious minutes, drive rather than walk up the world's most beautiful avenue. Take a quick stop at the Arc de Triomphe for a group photo. Pause to consider the wonder of Notre Dame. And pinch yourself in those moments you realize you really are in Paris. But for Mr. Summer, the highlight of the afternoon is a visit to the Musée de Louvre, where he can live out his dream of seeing the famous Mona Lisa. If they can work out where it is. Wow, so big. Where did it come from? Despite receiving almost a million Chinese visitors a year, there are no audio guides in Mandarin, and the map is in English, so it's difficult for them to find their way. And to understand what it is they're looking at. For the first time, clearly bewitched by the treasures on display, Mr. Summer forgets to take out his phone and just savors the moment. But time is ticking, and the Mona Lisa remains elusive. In the end, I help him out a bit. Yeah. There we go, the Mona Lisa. It's only small. It's <笑>有点失望嘛好像 
The Mona Lisa hasn't lived up to his expectations, but at least he finds the sculptures impressive. If there's ever a next time, maybe he'll get longer to appreciate them. It wouldn't be a proper tour without time for shopping. The average Chinese tourist in France spends more on shopping than food, entertainment and accommodation combined. I saw you were in business class and you had lots of cash. What was the money for? <laughs> a trip like this costs about 7,000 US dollars per person. Almost half of that is spent in the stores. You going shopping? Photo ops at famous sites can impress friends, but returning home with real deal luxury goods gives much more tangible bragging rights. Gucci! Gucci! Wow, look at that. Very nice. <laughs> Made in Italy. That's because you've been running around so much, you've worn out your shoes. The biggest crowds of shoppers flock to the luxury department store Gallery Lafayette, which has a dedicated entrance and shopping area just for Chinese tourists. All day, shoppers spill out of a constant stream of buses on a mission for designer labels cheaper than they can buy at home. It's no coincidence they end up here. Tour operators are paid big commissions to drive Chinese customers into department stores and keep them there for far longer than a visit to the museums or monuments. Someone who knows more than most about Chinese shopping habits is Philip Guarino. He advises luxury brands about the Chinese market. And here in Paris, getting buyers through the door is a complicated business. There are agreements that are made uh, with, uh, with tour operators in China, um, and a, a second agreement that is made with the outbound travel agency, a third agreement with the inbound French travel agency, a fourth agreement with the, with the local tour guide, and a fifth, finally, even with the bus driver. Typically, you're talking 5% for each hand that it passes through. Who pays those commissions? All the big department stores and brands rejected our requests for interviews. But Philip knows the inside workings of this industry. The brands certainly do pay some of this, and, and also the department store pays some of this. And we're talking a huge industry. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, yes. Very large industry. Millions, billions? Hundreds of millions, yeah. He says Chinese shoppers now account for up to half of luxury brand sales worldwide. 85% of those purchases are made in Europe or the US. But Philip argues paying commission is short-sighted. Chinese consumers are becoming more discerning. They don't like being forced on shopping marches and wealthier Chinese are opting out of bus tours and travelling independently. Locals like Stephanie have stopped shopping at the department stores. They say they're fed up with the crowds. Do you know that Galli Lafayette is the first spot in Paris to be visited after the Eiffel Tower? Her restaurant is just a hundred metres away. That's why the tour groups are so prominent on her street. Bonjour. But she realises the future of her business depends on adapting to this new clientele. You have these Chinese people in the neighbourhood. You have to deal with it. They bring you money. She's begun making signs to give tips to Chinese tourists and has even picked up a bit of Mandarin. We have a paper. Wash your staff. Be careful. And the other one is if you sit, you have to drink. <laughs> For those Parisians who worry there are already too many Chinese tourists in their city, they need to prepare for more. 
The authorities here want to double the number coming to 5 million a year. And it shouldn't be that difficult. Today, only 7% of the Chinese population has a passport, but many more have plans to travel. The saying goes that travel opens the gateway to knowledge. Now that the gateway between China and the world has been flung wide open, there's a lot for everyone to learn about each other.